Hi, good morning everyone. Good morning, hello, hello. It's so lovely to see you all and welcome to our Easter Sunday service, yay. <laughs> um, so yes, oh, it's great, more people are coming in. So should we sing to them as they come in? If you guys wanna get on your feet and let's start with an Easter classic of Line Be The Glory.
from the dead. Father, we are just so thankful for what you have done for us. There was nothing, nothing we could have done to ever earn or deserve your love, yet you gave your life. For you so loved the world, you gave your one and only Son, that all who believe in him will have everlasting life. Father, death is dead and love has won. And we celebrate this morning. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to take your seats. You guys are in brilliant voice this morning. And it's so lovely to welcome you to our Easter all-age service. So it'll be a bit different to normal because, children, you're staying in. But don't worry, we're going to got lots of fun and exciting things. And big kids that are here, we got lots of fun and exciting things. So that's really good. Just to remind you of our normal sort of notices, we do have a lot of people here this morning, which is fantastic. We're not planning on a fire drill, but if there is an alarm that goes off, you can either come through the doors, you came in, there's a fire exit over there. If you're in the overflow in the other room watching on live stream, hello, please familiarize yourself with the nearest exit. Feel like an air hostess a little bit. <laughs> um, so Jody and Jacob are our stewards this morning. Uh, they've got the lanyards on, so just grab them if you need any help. Andrea, I believe we have a target 40. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who are visitors today, when children have been to Sunday school for 40 times, they get a prize. And today, we are so excited because Elsie, wherever she is sitting, Elsie, come on down. Brilliant, well done. Thank you, well done, Elsie. Okay, so this morning, as I said, it's all age, and Paul and myself are going to be tag teaming it a little bit. And I'm really hoping Paul, oh, there you are. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> Paul, come on up. I'm hoping my mic is on and working. Uh, let's, let's do a little bit of movement and exercise, and we're going to read God's Word together anyway. So let's stand for God's Word, if you want. I'm, the, I'm as you see, the host, I guess. And then let's practice our, our response as a whole. So we'll say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, that was good. So we'll... We're reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just a few verses in the white, and we'll all respond, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. So let's do that together. But as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead. Amen. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. And I will hand it over to Lois. No, I guess I'm not really handing it over because I'm talking about this. Yeah. We have a fun, Lois is going, what in the world? Yeah. We have a fun thing for all. You can all sit. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> See, we tag team because I, I forget many things. One thing I did forget is this. Does everyone know what this is in my hand? Phoebe, what's this? Benjamin, do I see a hand? What's this? What is it? It's an egg. Is there a chick inside? What do you think's inside this egg? <laughs> oh, look at that. Absolutely nothing. Now, here's the thing. I do have something that can go inside. But I wanted to start us off to remind us, this is a beautiful picture of what? What's so important today? I'll have a child answer this. Why do you think the egg is empty? David, King David, why is the egg empty?
Because Jesus rose from the dead. The tomb is empty, right? So now that we have an empty tomb, we're just going to put a little piece of chocolate in there. Why not? And uh, I'm going to hide this one. But at this moment, we're going to let all the children have a little bit of an Easter egg hunt this morning. And some of the adults can participate. You might find an egg under your chair, you, but I would encourage all kids to start roaming around, not walking, not running, not running, walking around, walking around, and looking for some eggs. Would you like one, Brenda? Okay, look for the eggs. Also, if a child, if an adult finds one and a child doesn't, pass it off to the child. We have a, a wonderful amount of children today. I hope I brought them okay. <laughs> But most importantly, he claimed to be God in the flesh. At the dawn of time, he ignited human history when he spoke. He breathed life into the lungs of the first man and woman and every inch of creation itself. But we rebelled. We turned against our king and followed our own ways, even though it would cost us our life. Our sin poisoned his perfect creation, giving way to sickness, injustice, and death. Sin separated us from one another and from God. But rather than cast off humanity, God sent his son, Jesus, to enter into the world he created, the one broken by our sin. He breathed our air 
became human like us. He lived a perfect life, the one God intended we live, and called us to repent of our sin and follow him in faith. Some believed his word and recognized him as king. Others denied him. They crowned him with thorns and murdered him. They rejected him, and so have we. But God had a plan. Jesus willingly gave himself up to die on a cross to save us from God's judgment and the death we deserve. On that cross, he exchanged our rebellion for his obedience, our brokenness for his perfection. The Son of God died so we could live. And on the third day, he rose to life again, defeating death forever. And now he sits on the throne of heaven, offering life through the Holy Spirit to all those who repent and trust in him. Jesus is the King of Kings. You can either crown him or crucify him. There is no middle ground. No one will ever ask you a more important question than the one Jesus asked, who do you say I am? As we heard that video, just wanted to make sure you heard that question. Who do you say that I am? For you this morning, that is the most important question actually in life, is who is Jesus? Who was he when he came here to live on this earth? Why did he die on the cross? How amazing that he rose again. But your question might be, well, who is he for me? How do I understand all this? And we just want to highlight for Easter Sunday that we're offering Christianity Explore courses and want to make sure that if you are interested to find out more on that question, who is Jesus, that is exactly what Rico Tice and Christian Explored is trying to do in helping people answer that very question to find out more about who Jesus is. So if you are interested, speak to Lois or myself since you see us here up front, and we'll direct you in the right direction to make sure we can get you into that kind of a course to answer, as I believe, the most important question of all of life. How do you receive, what do you think about the Savior Jesus Christ? We'll continue to answer that question as we continue in this service, but He is alive and He is risen. Thank you, Paul. So, I hope you all found your Easter eggs. Have you all opened them? Yes. Yes, correct answer. Now, did anyone find anything else in their Easter egg other than chocolate? Yes. Yeah, great. So, there were a few Bible verses hidden in there. Has anyone got number one? This is where it might unravel. <laughs> if you have got number one, can you put your hand up and you can nominate the nearest adult to read that <laughs> verse for you, okay? You can pick on whoever you like. Raise your hand. Does anyone have number one? You've got three. Oh, he's gone out. Okay. So who would like to volunteer to read number one? It's on the screen. Yay, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay. Luke 24, 1, 2, 3. Um, at the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the womb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. Brilliant, thank you. A round of applause, thank you very much. <laughs> Who has got number two? Number two, anyone? Over there, Dave, yay. Who are you nominating, or have you been nominated? <laughs> Point. Thank you. Luke 24, verses four to six. While they were wandering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down and their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? 
He is not here. He has risen. Ah, oh, that's a great question. So he, why do you look for the living among the dead? Because he is not here. He has risen. So we're going to sing again in a second. And we're going to sing a song that covers a bit of last week, Palm Sunday, and this week. And it's all about Jesus, the King is risen. Now, this has got some sign language that goes with it, okay? So the chorus is very, very simple, and you'll know the tune, because it's a very famous other tune. Um, but it's Jesus, uh, the King is risen. So the sign for Jesus is like this. Does anyone know why we do this as a sign for Jesus? Because of the nails, brilliant, yes, so we're pointing to the nails. So if we just go to the chorus a second, Steve, so that's on the, the next slide. So there says, Jesus, the King. Now the sign for risen, you have to have one hand flat out like this, and with your other hand, sort of do a circle and then land on your palm, okay? So it's a little bit tricky. Risen. So let's try that together. Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King is risen. Jesus, the King is risen. No, I don't know. <laughs> Early in the morning. <laughs> um, but I do know sign language for Alleluia, which is like this. So we could just do that. <laughs> so. Morning. Ah, oh, draw the curtains. Morning. Lovely. So you can either draw the curtains or you can do Alleluia or you can do a mixture of the two, okay? So we're going to sing this as a band. If we go back uh, as a group, uh, if I call the band up, uh, let's go back to We Have a King. Now we're going to start nice and slow, but we're going to get quicker and quicker and quicker. So you better get good with those actions, okay? So remember, Jesus, King, risen. Either draw the curtains back for early in the morning or Alleluia if you prefer, okay? Let's, uh, let's stand and let's sing together. We have a king who rides a donkey.
nurses. Who had number three? Have you gone too far? Can you, can you be my runner? Thank yeah. you. Matthew 28, 8 to 10. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Brilliant. Round of applause. Thank you. Now, who's got verse number four? Number four, anyone over there? Oh, Paul, you've got to run the whole length. Let's clap for Paul as he's going. Or do turrets of fire, whatever you want. <laughs> da, 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 da. He's still going. Here we go. Number four. Oh. You start and I'll finish. Okay. First Corinthians fifteen three through four. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Fantastic. And one more number five, who's got that? Is that the other end of the hall again? Or is no one owning to having number five? Maybe Paul didn't put it in the eggs. Anyone want to volunteer for me to be a reader for this verse? It's on the screen. Anyone? Over here. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Come on, Paul, get, get running. Brilliant. Thank you very much. You have no reason to have sorrow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you have no reason to have sorrow as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and then came to life again. Brilliant. Round of applause. Thank you so much for volunteering as well. Okay, so we're going to go into a time of prayer and we're going to do this really creatively because we are people, that, that verse says, that have hope. Okay? So we're going to try and make some Easter prayer bunting. On my right in the windows, sort of near Derek there, Derek, be a glamorous assistant and point it out. And a Jan over here on this side, glamour system, point it out. There's some string and there's some little bits of pegs. In a moment, we're going to get our glorious stewards to run around and give out these triangles, which are all bunting. They're all different shapes and sizes because we're all different. And this bunting is going to represent us. And what I want you to do, we'll get some pens out. Now, you can either write something or, if you prefer, you can draw something that you want to thank God for this morning. So it could be as simple as a cup of tea. That's what I'd be drawing if I could draw. Or you might want to thank God for the hope that we have. Maybe it's for your mummy or for your daddy or for chocolate. <laughs> but let's think of things that we could draw or things that we can write. And uh, we're going to get these out to you now. So just have a think. And then when you've done that, go up to the nearest string and just peg your bunting on, OK? That'd be brilliant.
Okay, I'm glad you're entering into the Easter bunting. Keep, uh, if you've got more to write on there or more to peg up, we're just gonna carry on singing, but you guys can keep um, going and putting up more on the bunting um, and making it as pretty as, I can't actually see it, but I'm assuming it's beautiful. Um, and then we're gonna stand and sing, oh, praise the name. Have the word, Steve, that'd be great. Thank you. I cast my mind. I cast my mind to Calvary.
our last two verses that have kind of been allowing us to see a little bit of the story of the resurrection. Who has number six? Did anyone have number six? Oh, all right. Eli. Did it just die? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's on mute. There we go. John eleven twenty five to 26. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes, me, believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And the last verse, number seven. Who came up with number seven? All right. One Peter one three. What a God we have, and how fortunate we are to have Him, this Father of our Master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm just going to have a brief message that hopefully will engage us all. And there was a word in one of these verses, or actually a few of them, but one of them was believing. Now, kids, what do I have in my hand? Can any of you see? A chair. What do you do with a chair? You sit on it. Are you sure I can sit on this chair? Is it going to hold me up? Who do you say I am? No. <laughs> Jesus once asked his followers. Should I try? All right, I'm going to take a seat, and you tell me if, if it's going to if it's going to hold me. What, what if I don't trust the chair? Are you sure it's going to hold me? No. <laughs> what happens if I fall back into the piano or something? Should I sit? All right, here we go. <sighs> Did I fall back? No. All right, I have one more thing that I'm going to use a chair for. And I have some adult helpers to help me if they want to come up now. Because there's another way that I want us to think about Jesus being alive. Jesus being alive. And it's this question today. Do you believe that that is true? Do you trust that he is alive? It's this word believe and what it means. And I, I want us to have an illustration. So I'll have the, I think I asked four of you guys. I hope. Yeah, there we go. They're all tall. They're all strong. They're all. So we're going we're gonna to have two of you lined up this way and two of you lined up that way. And uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but I'm sure you have. This is, uh, this is called a trust fall. <laughs> so, who, who's the one being trust uh, worthy here? You, you have to be trustworthy. And I have to trust. Because in a moment, I'm going to cross my hands and I'm going to fall back. Now, how many of you think I'm going to be caught? <laughs> how many of you think I'm not going to be caught? <laughs> so I really have to believe that all of you are wrong, who raised your, your hands the second time. We must do this safely. <laughs> oh, way to go, way to go. Now the, now the key is you need to lower yourselves. That's the key. Yeah. I, I really have to fall. All right, are you guys ready? Do you think I can trust these guys? <laughs> you ready? Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> 
Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Now, where they were going to carry me, I don't know, but uh, it's this idea of what they call a trust fall, but it, it comes around this word to believe. And we're just going to look at God's word and this word, believe. And amazingly, the book of John which we're going to look at this resurrection account, uses believe all the time. We're just going to look at a few verses leading up to the resurrection. John 1.12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John, who is speaking to Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Sanhedrin who comes quietly to Jesus because of the fear of, of his other Jewish rulers. But he asked Jesus, how am I born again? And Jesus gives him one of the most common verses we've heard. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, there it is again, believes in him, will not perish, will not die, but have eternal life. Then Jesus talks to a Samaritan woman, a woman at the well, First off, he wasn't supposed to speak to women in that culture. Secondly, certainly not to Samaritans. Jesus breaks all the rules. He is a different kind of son of man. And here, after the woman goes back to the village, she says to the villagers, come and see Jesus. And this is the result. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. This is what the woman said to them. He told me everything I've ever done. He knows everything about me. That is our Jesus. That is true for each one of us in this room. There is nothing we can hide from Jesus, the Savior. And you know what? He comes with grace and forgiveness in every situation we've been through. He says, my grace, my forgiveness covers that. My love covers that. In John 5, he says to the crowd, Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but is crossed over from death to life. That's what today is about. When you believe in Jesus, you cross from death to eternal life. How is it so true? How is it so Wonderful. John 9, he shares with the blind individual. And the blind man comes and he says, where is this son of man so that I might worship him? Where is he? And, and he's right in front of Jesus. And Jesus says, the son of man is the one who is speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. This blind man believes and falls down and worships. Jesus says to Martha in John 11, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, if you know that story, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Well, Jesus goes to Martha and he says to her, I am the resurrection. What a claim. I am the resurrection. I raise everything. I give life to everything. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he will live. And he puts a question to Martha. He says, and this is a question for all of us, do you believe this? Martha responds amazingly, and she says, I do. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. Now, we get into the story in John chapter 20, and I have a few objects here that I need the kids' help with. All right, kids, can you see this? What, uh, what would you think this might be in my hands? I, I heard it. What? A torch. Because early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, it says in John 20, verse 1, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. What is amazing is 
the first witness of the resurrection was Mary. And she was so eager that she went to the tomb in the dark. Do you think they had torches back then? Do you think they had portable batteries? <laughs> Who said yes? <laughs> But this story shows, William, I'll have to answer your question later. I'm sorry, William. I'm sure it's about batteries and torches, and I'm happy to talk to you, William, about batteries and torches. But she was so eager. She, there was something inside of her that said, I must go check on Jesus. I believe there was this seed of belief, this seed of faith. Then it says, there's two other characters what is this? What do you think this is? Don't worry, Elizabeth, you'll get this back. It's, sa it's safely going back in my box. Don't worry, it's going to come home. It's a shoe. Is it a specific kind of shoe, maybe? A trainer. What do you use trainers for? For running, I heard. For running. Because Amazingly, after Mary visits, we have Peter and the disciple that goes unnamed, which we realize is John, because he doesn't even want to use his own name in his own book. But Peter and John run to the disciple. All right, here's the quiz, kids. Which disciple beat the other? Peter or John? Who won? Who won the running race? Oh, I heard it. John. John runs, and it says the disciple who got there first went inside, as we read here, and when he saw that the tomb was empty, he believed. The disciple John saw an empty tomb, saw a missing Savior, and right then he believed. He believed what Jesus had said as him being the resurrection, all right, the next thing. All right, what is this? What do you think this is, kids? Does anyone need one right now? Okay, good, good. No, yep, no is a good word, yep. <laughs> it says that Mary, who was still there, she stood outside the tomb. She couldn't go in. But actually, she was weeping. She was weeping, and then she went in to look and in some ways, we see Mary, one with sorrow. She wasn't like the disciple John who believed when he saw the empty tomb. She was one who wept, who cried. How could this be? My Savior, my Jesus, gone. Where has he gone to? Who has taken him, was Mary's thought. Who took him away? All right. We have another. All right, does anyone see what this might look like? What is this? A newspaper. What's, what is a newspaper supposed to do? What's it supposed to tell you? It tells you the news. Well, it's supposed to, be, it's supposed to tell you the news. Sometimes it gets a miss. But that's what Mary does. You know the story of Mary? She's weeping in the garden. And the gardener comes to her, but the gardener says, Mary. And that's all he has to do. He speaks her name, and she knows who that is. This is not the gardener. This is Jesus. And she falls on his feet and clings to him. And Jesus actually has to tell Mary, Mary, you have got to let go of me for now. This is not the time that you can cling to me. But please go and tell the disciples. And that's what she does. She went to the disciples with the news. Now, we're getting a little away from the news, but truly news was always something that occurred, something that was seen, evidence that was factual, and then someone would run and tell another. At least back in this time, that is what news was. A herald or a messenger 
would go from town to town and tell you the truth of what happened somewhere else. And that is exactly what Mary does. She has seen an empty tomb. She has seen a risen Savior. And Jesus says, go and tell. Go and speak to others. Give the disciples the good news. And she says, I have seen the Lord. He is alive. And Jesus stood with his disciples and he showed them his hands. What's this, kids? What's this? Oh, maybe I should do this. Here we go. Oh, there we go. What's this? A glove to remind ourselves that Jesus came to his disciples and he showed them by his hands and his side that he had nailed scars in his hands as we did the sign language earlier. It is really me. Touch me. Watch me eat. It is I. It is the alive Jesus Christ in bodily form. I am with you. And it says the disciples were overjoyed. Now there was one disciple I don't have here, but I'll quiz you. Anyone, I guess, but I think the kids might know this. What was the one disciple who doubted and who was not there with the rest of his disciples? This is a hard one. What was that? Okay, Judas was already gone. Good, good answer. Oh, I heard it. Archie says Thomas. Is that correct? Yes. Thomas doubted. Isn't that true for us? Especially when we ask that question, do you believe that Jesus is alive? Even one of the 12 who had been with him for three years, he said, I, I cannot believe, I cannot believe that until I see him, until I touch him. And Jesus does come to Thomas, and he says, Thomas, touch my hands, touch my side. It is Jesus, it is I. And this is what Jesus told his disciples. He told them, because you have seen me, you believe. Because you could come up and actually touch, you believe. But he says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. And here is the beautiful truth that John John wrote his whole gospel with this last summarizing verse in chapter 20. These things are written. It says, these things are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. And that by believing, you might have life in his name. And as we finish, I just want us now actually to remember, what was I doing in the very beginning? I was trusting in a chair. Did the chair hold me up? I was trusting in four men to catch me. Did those men hold me up? That is what this idea of believing means. It actually means I'm willing to fall and completely put all of me into the trust of somebody else. All of me. <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> Health and safety would go crazy. <laughs> but just then, you all gasp because in some moment, we lose the ability to control our safety. And that is this idea of believing. Are you willing to let go and put your whole life, your safety, your security, everything about you into someone else's hands. Another way to put believing is it is faith in action. 
I could say, yes, I believe. Yeah, I believe those men will hold me, and I'll just, you know, I'll just watch them and say, yeah, good job, men. You look like you're about to hold me. Yeah, thanks. Good job. I trust you. But it's another thing when you get up and you act on that belief and you actually fall because you trust. When we see this word in John saying these people believed in Jesus, that is the idea. It is a faith that does something, a faith that is put to action, that takes those clenched fists that says, this is my life, this is what I will do, no one can tell me what to do, I will make the decisions for me, I will figure out how to survive, I will fight till the end, and we, we let go. We get on our knees and we let go and we say, my life is no longer mine. I, I entrust my life to somebody else. I fall and I believe my Savior will catch me. And that is what I want us to finish with, is that picture. Romans tells us, it's a great chapter, if you want to read it today, Romans chapter 10 from the beginning all the way through, if you want. But Romans 10, 1 through 12, talks of this whole concept of believing. And here in 9, it says, if you declare with your mouth, that's another way to act on something, that Jesus is Lord. If you can say this morning, Jesus is Lord, He's my Savior, that doesn't come from you. That comes from your heart, something that's been changed. Yes, Jesus, you are my Lord. I entrust everything of my life to you. I have no idea what tomorrow is going to look like. But today I'm saying you are my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I believe. And then it says that you believe in your heart that God has truly risen him from the dead. There's this simple truth. You will be saved. You say, that's, that's, that's so simple. It sounds simple, but is the hardest thing in life is to lay down our will, our wants, our wishes, our control, and say, Jesus, you are Lord. I believe you are my Lord. And as one said, Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. And maybe that is your prayer this morning. He is alive and risen. Here's the question. Do you believe? It's a belief that will lead to an action. It's a belief that allows me to actually get up here and trust that four guys are going to actually catch me. Thank you, men, for doing that. I appreciate it. Either way, it would have been a memorable uh, uh, incident, of course. But belief leads to action. I had to actually fall. I had to actually trust. I had to actually do something. And that's what I want to leave you with this morning. Maybe you've heard this many times, and maybe it's just a reminder, but God calls us to believe in Him to the point that we act upon that belief that our lives actually see changes happening, that we, as Romans 10 says, we declare with our mouth, yes, I believe, Jesus is Lord. That is the beginning of what's going on in the heart. When our mouths say that, it's showing something going on that's changing our heart. So that's what I want to leave us with this morning. Those here on Easter Sunday, do you believe that Jesus is risen from the dead? And if he is risen from the dead, our lives too will have no end. If we are in Jesus Christ, we too will be raised. We will have eternal life. When we are asleep here on the earth, we will be awakened with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Do you believe?
Amen. Amen. Nice. Thank you, Paul. We're just going to finish with a final song and we're going to turn our eyes to Jesus. And then after that, our service will be finished, but there will be tea and coffee in the other room um, so we can enjoy having celebration time together. So if you'd like to stand with me.
you like to take your seat because like, it's the end of our service? If you, if, kids, if you do have an egg, Paul is holding a basket, please, uh, if you would be so kind to return it, um, and pens and things like that as well. Um, Paul will be at the back there, um, but please go make your way to coffee, and um, happy Easter, everyone.